Today I got recommended a video that caught my attention. It's a blind date with a self-proclaimed rock star. And usually I take all these things with a grain of salt because I don't believe these kind of videos are genuine or real since it's obviously filmed and they know it. But this one just oozed authenticity to me. You've all heard that expression, fake it till you make it, when it comes to confidence. And this guy is the embodiment of that, but dialed up to wumbo. It is rough. I actually felt like I was watching an old video posted onto the Pickup Artist subreddit from like 2012. So I just wanted to go over this with all of you. Maybe it'd be like a nice lesson. And again, I don't know if it's 100% real or if this guy is just playing it up for the camera. But either way, I'm going to suspend my disbelief because it's pretty wild. I'm going on my first blind date ever. I'm a rock star. Today, I'm looking for a rock baby. All my friends friends on me, so hopefully I'll get out of the friend zone today. This video just comes out of the gate so hot and immediately feels like I'm watching something from the mid-90s. I'm a rock star looking for a rock baby, which is a term I've never heard in my life. I, I don't know who's told this man that that's a real thing people say, but just hearing it made me feel bad. And then he says all these girls friend zoned him. I think of myself as a god. Making music, crazy things happen. My person would probably need to be somewhat okay with the possibility of something happening if they're not there. So we're getting a little appetizer here for what's to come. This stinger is going insano style. He thinks of himself as a god and needs a girl that's going to be okay with him cheating on her when he's away performing music or, or something. Like, this is just things I can't imagine anyone would say, especially not on a first date. No matter how hard you're trying to fake being confident, this is just going so far over the line. The cup runneth over in this case, where it's no longer even looking confident, it's bleeding insecurity all over the floor. I'm going on my first blind date ever, today. If I had to describe myself in one sentence, I would say that I'm incredibly unique because I have an unhuman work ethic. Everyone describes themselves as unique, and everyone thinks they're the hardest workers on the planet. That's that Sigma grind set, baby. But unfortunately, I'll hit you with the cold water. Just because you shop at Forever 21 for your outfit and wear a lot of chains doesn't make you unique. I can't speak to his work ethic because obviously I haven't heard his music and don't know too much about him personally aside from this date. But just this immediate, like, nuts to butts, I'm so confident and I'm so unique is just a bad look. So... Uh, really, the reason I'm mainly showing this video is a, a PSA, because that advice, fake it till you make it, is probably one of the most parroted pieces of advice ever, and it's really not that bad in general, but there is definitely a limit to it. When you're faking it this hard, it's extremely counterproductive for you. Hi. How's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. And then what brought you out here? I make music. I'm a rock star. Okay. Cool. If you have to say you're a rock star, you're absolutely not a rock star. It's that exact same shit like, yeah, I'm alpha. No, no, no shot. It's just one of those things where you can't give yourself a title. It's just super embarrassing and it immediately makes people write you off as goofy. Like imagine if you introduce yourself like, hey, what's up? My name's Charlie. I'm a fashion icon. That immediately just halts everything and people look at you like you're stupid. You know. A lot of times when you're a music artist, a model is kind of like the person that you want. Because if I'm on tour for six months and they're doing photo shoots for three of those months versus somebody who has like a regular job who wants this constant attention and cuddling. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on with the background music here with the, the record scratching and then the occasional robot sounds that sounds like a fax machine dying. But regardless, you can see the gears switching. You know, he's engaging in small talk with this girl, but he's immediately thinking to himself, yeah, since I'm a rock star, I really should only be going for models, and then explaining his reasoning for it. He thinks that because he's been making music for three years, he's now a full-fledged, sworn-in rock star who now has to abide by every rock star code, which means getting a hot babe model for a, a partner. See, that's the thing, you're like a big music person. Not, not music ever person. As, yeah, no, I like the very awful, like, I like just basic pop music. Yeah, I know. pop music is such I've trash. been getting into, like... Yeah, that's pretty much where this one dies. Uh, she said the P word, which is going to trigger a winter soldier event in this guy. You can't say pop music around a rock star. It, it, it's, it's illegal. It's a crime, goddammit. I typically listen to music who are similar to me, so Justin Bieber, Kid Leroy. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. Well, I'll listen to that kind of music then. Just kidding, I guess. Pop music is such trash, which is why I listen to things that aren't pop, like Justin Bieber and the Kid Leroy. I don't know if this was like a bait and switch, or if he was setting it up as some kind of joke, I'm not positive, but regardless, it isn't over yet. We're in the fourth quarter, but there's still a chance here. I go to festivals, clubs, whatever. When I'm going on dates, is it like working or are we dating? What are you looking for? Just career first? Are you uh, looking for someone? I don't know. Like my number one goal in life is to become famous. So he briefly explains that because he's a rock star, he's traveling and, you know, going out all the time, so he never really knows what's actually a date, and then says his number one goal in life is to become famous. Now, I'm not here to shit on anyone's hopes and dreams. I think it's very important that people find their main motivator in life, no matter what it is. But this goal to become famous is one that you should absolutely keep to yourself for quite some time before you really start to know someone. This should not be like an off-rip thing that you say to a girl on a first date because it immediately gives off the impression that your main desire is a selfish one. So then that conveys the idea that you are self-centered, which is probably not the impression you want to give off to someone right away. Have you ever loved anyone? Like, been in love? I've been engaged twice. Twice? Twice, yeah. One of them was when I was 14. You got engaged really young. Wow. I mean, I don't know, I'm very mature for my age, so I would say that, like, that person that I got engaged from when I was 14, I'm still best friends with her. Yeah, so this shit's really getting weird quick. And I don't think there will ever come a time in human history where the phrase, very mature for my age, will be anything other than creepy. Very creepy. I was actually engaged for a second time when I was 17. There's a ring and everything. Yep. Since we're in LA and you talk about exploring and all this stuff, has polyamory ever crossed your brain? Non-monogamous? Oh, um... I, I mean, I don't think I mind it, actually. Man chose the worst dialogue option in the entire game and still somehow got the neutral ending. On the first date, immediately bringing up a polyamorous relationship for some reason. I, I don't know why that came up, especially after the whole getting engaged at 14 and 17 thing. But he, he plays all the cards, I suppose, here, and she says, potentially making music, crazy things happen, yeah. my person would probably need to be somewhat okay with the possibility of something happening yeah. if they're not there. Shoot. Would you excuse me? Yeah, for sure, go ahead. I should check my phone and things. Yeah, so if you were interested in me, just know I'm gonna cheat on you. It's gonna happen, because I'm a rock star. And it's what we do. It's in our DNA. Okay? And you can't be mad about it, because I told you. I gave you fair warning. Now if you'll excuse me from the dinner table for a moment, I need to check my phone. My mother was calling me about picking her up from yoga after this. Could be... <laughs> uh, I mean, well, she definitely answered some of the questions correctly. I would say he's typically not my type. Um, but he's really cool. I would say, uh, I get friends zoned a lot. Yeah, there's a lot to process here. This could be a potential rock baby. The, she was really nailing those questions, those real brain busters here. Uh, she, however, does not normally go for this type of alpha male, but she did say that he's pretty cool, so that's, all things considered, a dubski right there. And then he immediately makes things sad by reminding us that he gets friend-zoned, you know? We've really seen it a million times where the nice guys get friend-zoned because the Stacys want the Chads. It's a tale as old as time and it's sickening no matter how often it's told. But this could be one of those rare cases where, you know what, the nice guy does finally win. The nice rock star guy who wants to cheat a lot. So basically, being a rock star is pretty cool because I have a lot of friends that are very attractive. Which is dope, you know, it's right. cool to hang around pretty girls, I guess. Uh, but, unfortunately, they've all friends on me. You blew it. Uh, I don't know why you would do this. Make it sad like an ASPCA commercial. Yeah, as a rock star, I got so many hot ladies around me, but they all friends on me. You won't friends on me, will you? How's that been for you? Because I know, like, societally we're getting better, but I know, like, definitely it hurts, like, the male ego things like that. You can't really help that, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you're just not someone's type. I just think very high of myself. I think of myself as a god. Honestly, shockingly self-aware from the guy here, recognizing that sometimes you're just not someone's type, and that's okay. You know, you're not gonna shoot 100% from the three-point line. It's just not going to happen. 
So you're going to get friend zoned and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're not happy being that person's friend, then you just move on. You know, it's just that simple. But also maybe don't view yourself as an actual fucking God. But not a God like God, like up here, yeah. but like God of manifestation. Cause anything that I put my mind to, I get. Are you confident or cocky? Both. I'm a great dancer. Can you blow some dance moves right now? I'll do a go-to. It's just like, hey. There you go. A little wave for you. That used to be my go-to dance moves at the bar too. The little wave, but he kind of fucked up. because You're supposed to go, uh, and then you take it from the chest down. So you body wave it, oh, and then it comes back, whoop. And then you go the whole other distance. So he didn't do like the whole performance. I'm assuming he incorporates the body waves in there too, I would think. So, you know, maybe he is a god. Like I didn't think that you would be my type, but you actually somehow have checked off some of these boxes. Right now, we're just like hanging out, friends, seeing the vibe. I think that uh, she understands what it takes to be the rock star, and uh, <laughs> she's very pretty. Uh, and uh, you know, I would say this is worth it. It's fun. It's a good time. All things considered, it wasn't a complete disaster or anything like that. I do think if he dialed back the fucking pseudo confidence or whatever you can really even call it, it would have gone much better. Because at the very least, she communicated well with him. It's just every time she talked, his answer would always start with things like, as a rock star or, you know, being a rock star. Like that kind of shit gets old so quick. It's putting up false security, even though on the inside, it's nothing but insecurity. Like you don't need to keep referring to yourself as a rock star. You can just talk normally. So I just wanted to show this as just kind of like, you know, fake confidence till you get real confidence, but don't fake it too hard and go too wild with it. You know, find that nice middle ground. That's really about it. See ya.